Okay. Yeah, we're on the mic. Let's do it. With Gail Young. Then I'm not going to spread something else. So I'm trying to think about what else in this table of contents is good. Yeah. Um, like, a lot of it is, um, like, helping the teen um, to get to consensus on whatever they need to get on. But I would say that the big things about this would be helping somebody charter their team. Mm-hmm them deal with any difficult team dynamics as they come up um, and, and what to kind of expect and then um, and then mm-hmm. probably something around good team decision making because if a team doesn't make decisions together well that mm-hmm. can be a, a, a sticking point for them and then um, the ending point um, how to like close teams off or transition um, and celebrate like whatever wins they are because um, mm-hmm. uh People celebrating the wins of a team is part of a is something that they often forget, and that uh-huh. keeps people reinforced to keep continuing. And then I think about like when I think about a project team um, and keeping people motivated. I think about how do you do many small wins, public recognition, keep them motivated. Like how do you keep reinforcing the things that that would keep them engaged? So uh-huh. probably your your rewards and recognition structure. But um, but like as a team lead, I think about. How do we, like a small win on a on an interim project might be, you know, we communicated clearly about our scope and we got, you know, four more volunteers who are willing to work on X thing. That's amazing. Thank you, you know, Stephanie, for doing the outreach on that. That was really important for us and, and we couldn't have done it without, you know, things like that. Like it's, it's all, it's all it's uh-huh. a series of conversations. Okay. Um, and then I would also think about what makes recruiting easier for you. Like, um, so, okay. you, know, you can't do it with people, okay, you ahead. need to do it with materials or outreach or email. Um, I don't know what your CRM, uh, if you have any way of tracking like your client relationships at all, but, um, but I would wonder about things like, um, uh, you know, trying to automate it, your, your pipeline as much as possible. What are the tools that you would suggest for that? The you know, tools? Um, so, so CRM? Really first ones, unfortunately. Um, Sugar CRM was the closest and it was problematic. I've been playing a little bit with um, both Insightly and Contactually. They're very corporate based. Um, but um, what I like about it is sort of like you can do batch emails from them and you can remind the net reminders. Like if you, if you have a working group, you can. Um, send out like an email out to them with like updates or current tools or things like that. So trying to find ways. Well, how about to... Civi? Would C- Civi CRM be any good or? CRM would work. I'm not as familiar with it. I haven't I haven't played with it personally. What do you think is the role of uh, a mail list? Is that included when you say CRM? That's that's got the mailing functionality that you can do infinite emails. Yeah, yeah I would definitely want it to have a mailing functionality. You'd want have you want to have in-house ability so you're not paying for things like Mail- mailchimp but do that in-house the, like um, through a content management mailchimp is a great system for that mm-hmm. okay when we're starting out to to generate the materials that was so yeah i mean i guess probably probably the approach for osc i mean we got to start from scratch here and what is the process for, by which we identify and therefore train the leaders? I think it, it seems that the conversation is leading to that. How do we, within our community, people who have, have been involved, how do we select a few people that we actually proactively work on this with them to, to become the, the team builders for each project? I mean, you know, I or, mean, it would, there's a couple ways to do it. You want to make the barrier to entry low because it's a volunteer thing that can be challenging. Uh-huh. Um, so that is, is my general take on it. Um, uh, let me think. I would, um, I mean, this is first because you're working with a volunteer community. The first, the first thing is to ask or get references. Like, who would you nominate to lead a team on X who would be both interested and capable? Have some basic criteria in place, you know. Have some experience leading teams to successful results. Um, has worked with multiple stakeholders before and come in a consensus maybe, um, so like to see in a high-functioning team, um, can build trust, um, and then, of course, whatever technical competence you may or may not need them to have. Um, so I'd start with some really basic criteria, but keep it, like, 
not more than like three bullet points just because you don't want to you want to walk the fine line between having criteria and scaring people off because again volunteer um and then um, putting out a call for that or asking for nominations for that is one way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then okay. encouraging people to ask, especially if you want to get women involved, I think it's really important to do that, like actually get out there and ask people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so say we find, say we identify this person. Um, so to come up with the, with the materials, can you can you uh, suggest some good references on, on that process? Is there any good resources online to, that you can recommend for, to us as far as the training training of that person or getting them up to speed, or you it's want just a person to develop the training materials? Is that what I'm hearing? Um, well, we uh, what I'm envisioning is that okay, we have a person that comes into the table, but because of course of our differences and how we operate, we have to train them to get up to speed uh -huh. on culture and every and other skills. Let's assume that we can work with people who don't have all the skills but can be taught, uh, which yeah. is because because the person who's good at it probably is getting paid by somebody else to do it. Exactly. Um, you know, I I would say there there is um, there's a lot of great books out, out there. Um, I would look at, um, at there's a um, the, I think it's called the Leader's Guide to Participatory Decision Making. I'm not looking at my bookshelves around me because I know I own a couple copies of it running around um, in here. I can pull you together a quick list of some of the, the books and resources. There's also a lot of, um, it's just like what you need them to do. Like, are they, uh, yeah, the facilitator's guide to participatory decision making. That's what the book is called, and it's by a guy named Sam Kaner. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a great basic book on group facilitation that can be really useful that you can probably adapt to open source stuff. And I'm trying to, um, Foundation. Uh... Are there are there nonprofit support groups that that help with this process of actually training leaders or 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 potentially yeah. even providing leaders? Yeah, there's a Craigslist boot camp um, that does that's one. Um, there's there's a bunch of them do various Craigslist boot camp. Like, um, yeah, Craigslist boot camp has a Nonprofit arm to it, um, and they, they teach on things like. Oh, some of it's around like social media and stuff, but um, some of it's around leadership. Um, are you looking at though because the problem is that the field is so broad and huge that it's hard to like figure out what what's the entry point into it because if you're looking at like it's a working the kind of leadership that you want to dive into is like the um sort of like uh the facilitation aspect specifically of supporting a group and getting its work done if you're trying to get at a broader level of leadership there's a whole a whole set that's focused on like um strategy, uh, tactics, business planning, um, what's your engagement strategy with different users, etc. So there's, there's that whole level of leadership. And then there's a whole another piece around like what it takes to like do management well. Um, so it breaks down across a lot of different ways. And that's part of the challenge of like, there isn't like one weekend on leadership. If I were going to recommend anything um, there's a great program called The Art of Leadership run by the Rockwood Leadership Institute. Um, and they might, they do um, scholarships and they have a nonprofit aspect to it. And their course is called The Art of Leadership. It's probably one of the best, like, overall broad, um, broad pieces I know. I'm just gonna, I'll stick a link to it in your, in the mm -hmm. hangout. Is that something we want to send our people to, to, or attend ourselves both? You know what? I would. I always recommend starting it yourself so that you know what you're sending mm -hmm. your people to, and so you can adapt the materials appropriately. Yeah. So you might not want um, like 
there are pieces that you'll want and people that you don't. What I like about Rockwood and Rob, Robert Gass, who's the guy who runs it, um, is that um, uh, he freely, I don't know if it's completely Creative Commons licensed, but he freely distributes his stuff, and so that makes it really accessible. Um, and his project is called the Social Transformation Project. Project.org. Let me pull that up and send you that link too. And that's got a lot of great resources as well. That's pretty um, accessible. Yeah. Um, along with the tools like team development, productive meetings, etc. So this would be a great place for you guys to start because you can just um, download. Like he's got these great worksheets on various um, like. Uh, aspects of change and you can just download them which is really easy so that whole database is through the if, if you look under um on the under social transformation project tools and resources um he's got a whole thing for instance let me just pull up the link for facilitation um uh and you can just download these files they're fantastic mm. the um i just sent you the latest link around facilitation like and if you look at the, like, the download the file on creating team agreements um, and then you have to put your name in there, but you can just download them all, um, uh, which are very useful. Huh. Oh, um, very and then, nice. of course, you're just really welcome to distribute them and share them. Yeah, oh, well, that's pretty useful. And you yeah. like this, what's the mission of this project? I mean, it's really about getting... Information. It's, so Robert Gass is one of the, probably one of the best people I know in the leadership space. He's really good. He's um, He's worked with the White House, not that you can tell from the American political landscape that he's a great you know, but, um, mm -hmm. but he's worked with the White House and he's worked with a lot, like, he is the go-to person for a lot of um, organizations um, at high levels. Um, he's mainly semi-retired right now and lives out in Colorado with his wife, um, and they do, they've, they've turned their, their time and their old age to, like, doing couples retreats, which is really hilarious, but, um, but he's a wizard, <laughs> and so his whole mission is to just make the make support nonprofit leaders and support them and and being better leaders and like that's his whole thing and so that's part of why he just distributes all this i mean you could take he does one training a year at this tiny remote island off the coast of vancouver um it's just gorgeous and it's worth trying to get to but it's a pain in the ass to get to at the same time bainbridge uh, and i'm pretty sure it's probably i'm pretty sure it's sold out this year because it's mm -hmm. it, it, like you know when it comes to Again, he only does himself one training year, but he's trained a lot of other people who are very, very good at what they do. Okay. Um, and it sounds... they would be... Did you go to that? Hmm? Did you attend one of his courses? or? I did. I, I, took, um, I took his Art of Leadership um, a few years ago, and then I'm doing his Art of Transformational Consulting workshop next week, which should just be a lot of fun. I am looking forward to that. Well. Yeah. So, well, all right, let me go back to the deck. I was poking around at different materials. Um, yeah. Is there any tool, is there any, so this, this is about training leaders. Is there any nonprofit that actually provides the service of providing interns or students that that help other organizations uh, run teams? You know, I don't know of one that does offhand. Um, I know that some of what you get if you're like an an Acumen Fund fellow or or maybe um, Ashoka or one of those other organizations, in which case you get a lot of support for this, mm -hmm. um, or like a fellow or something. But usually you have to be part of some sort of affiliated fellowship program. Mm -hmm. That's the, yeah, that's the only experience um, I know about there. Okay. So, so, so that means training the leaders, not providing the leaders. Like providing, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like once you get in, then you get a full level of training. Um, I don't know if anybody who just like kind of offers that particular skill set. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm assuming that for OSC, we're gonna have to develop work hard on developing training materials, training strategy to make this happen. So, yeah, yeah. Probably. Um, yeah. I mean, basically because I mean, like you guys, but possibly even more so. 
we run into culture issues. Yeah, probably more than you guys. Way more, what kind actually. What issues do you run into specifically? Well, just the, first the basic open source, and second, it's everything surrounding the open culture. The, because we're really trying to push the barriers of it. But into that, what you probably don't have, well, to some extent, we probably have this more, but a lot of people regarding lifestyle solutions where people get disillusioned or people don't have a correct level of expectation management for what we can offer and how they get, you know, a lot of times it's that we have the dream dream village built and all that kind of stuff. Um, the expectations are an issue. But of course the open culture where we are radically open sourcing economic information, we get into trouble for that here and there. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, one by people, for, so, so we start running into issues where people very visibly feel threatened by what we do. So, I mean, there's crazy stuff going on like that. So on top of your open source tribulations, we've got a couple of other layers uh, that we have yeah. to deal with. So to get around that, we have to really be very clear about the level of training we provide to our people so that they are able to lead their teams effectively a lot on expectation management and mm -hmm. work work style and all that. So, but anyway, uh, so getting back to just the fact that we need to train people, maybe we can spend uh, a few minutes talking about, okay, if we're training people, what what are the th the steps? Okay, say, assume we, well, we just developed this one aspect of training. What is our step one through five to do that? So say we get onto this, start creating this training program today. What do we do? Uh, it depends on what you need training to be. Like the thing that I would get clear on is what yeah. do you want people to walk out of the training with, right? So. So uh, training. Okay, let's be specific. Training program. So training program specifically to lead work teams which are involved in technical development. So this person is a uh, like a project manager, but a culturally sensitive project project manager for these teams so basically the one to the there's the skill set two is the culture but three is also the element of being very clear what's in it for them so how are we positioning this system? is this a learning opportunity for them is this do we approach it from the point of open source development like how do we approach that you know so let's see so we did volunteer yes. organizations like the, the Fund Dissemination Committee, which was a network of volunteers that, that decided where our movement funds were going. Um, we did it in a couple ways. One, that was a learning opportunity, but two, a real opportunity to significantly influence the movement. And, and that, that piece was really motivational for some people, like doing really values-aligned work that was fundamentally in service of the open source movement was huge. And if you're like, so if one of the motivational factors is moving somebody along the path to, um, uh, really moving somebody along the path to, um, I forgot what I was going to say at the end of that sentence, I got struck by Lifestyle that. investment. Um, the, uh, the, the thing that I would first train mm. is one, um, what's the context and what you're trying to do? Because you always ground everything back in that. If you're not grounding people back in your overall context and mission, that's really important. And, and why your mission is in some sense higher leverageable because it's an end-to-end -end lifestyle look rather than just a specified thing. And so that those, that's where you can do the culture and the context and the specific challenges of the culture and context and the potential impact that they can have um, in, in, and, and what, where you see their, them really plugging into your organization and the movement, mm -hmm. um, which goes a little bit to the, the thing that keeps them motivated in it. Mm -hmm. I think that the second piece, um, if you're looking at, at, at team leaders, is, um, is, is how to charter a team. You know, it's uh, the chartering of a team is so important. Um, it, you know, what are you what are you planning to do with that team? How long do you think it needs to be around for? How do you scope out the work um, uh, of the team itself um, and sort of like the the group? How do you and then how do you staff the team? Like, how do you do either a call for volunteers? What kind of volunteers are you looking for? What kind of people do you think you might need on it based on the requirements of the of the scope of the work in the first place. Um, mm -hmm. Two, how do you then, you know, once you have a team down, like, um, what's that set up for like, success? How do you build good group norms? Like, how frequently do you communicate? What is your escalation point if something goes wrong or a miscommunication happens? What are the ground rules that you want for a team? Like, you know, in Wikimedia, one of them might be like, assume good faith. Like, um, 
what are your decision making structures? Is it um, when is it like everybody informs everybody, and you can have different decision making structures depending on the the scale and scope of the decisions. Mm-hmm. But if it's a working team, you know you want some consensus. How do you um, divide up work and come back together, and what are the different structures for doing that? Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, you know step four is like how do you keep a a team ongoing? Like how do you do like good check ins with people? Um, and then how do you and build small wins into the whole process? And then I'd say step five would be how do you mm-hmm. close your team effectively? Yeah. Okay. I think the first thing we can start working on is uh, define the basically make a very clear call out for what the team leader is doing. Just define that role very exactly. clearly and so that people are actually they- highly motivated to say, wow, that's cool. Yep. Exactly, and what kinds of teams, what kind of, like, people are sometimes engaged. For me, I get excited about, like, the, the project. Like, what am I actually going to get to work on? It's like, oh, this, like, tackle this giant issue that, that impacts these five things later down the line, right? Mm-hmm. So, so like, if we fix, if we solve this, that this has, this X thing has the possibility of it affecting how we think about these things. Like, people, people that are smart and have excess brain capacity like big challenges, um, uh, broken down into a manageable chunk that won't eat up all their time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the, that's, the, that's the piece of it. Um, and, and, and so is the language yourself uh, itself of what you're using to track these leaders um, something that, that they, they would find compelling? And you can, you can test that. You, know, you can send it to a couple of people that you see as potentially really great um, other leaders and say, would you find this compelling if we use this language versus say this language? You know, I would, I would get like, a, like um, a small user group to just test some of the language on before mm-hmm. putting out a, a call to some of this. And again, the big thing is like asking, um, asking people to ask people they know because the invitation, um, the, the person to person invitation is so important. Like I wouldn't have volunteered to talk to you guys myself if Colby hadn't asked if I would, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's wouldn't necessarily uh, like I have enough things on my screen so you need the things that, that mm-hmm. get the signal about the noise mm-hmm. um, that's why that piece is so important mm-hmm. yep. um, and then the you know the, the piece around having a, a part of the invitation you know, the potential to have a huge impact be a part of this movement this movement spans and here's what we're really trying to do we're trying to create an open like Things in the public domain are important for X. It's to create a whole stable, like it's, a, it's the real promise of open source is, is a stable, human thriving ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, as a part of it, you know, you'll get to lead this team, and this team will do this X particular exciting piece of work. And here's why it's so important for this for the whole yeah what's the medium for doing this this do you suggest we're thinking quick videos little explainer videos personal invitation me getting on the mic things like that's that. that's great yeah i mean some of it will be picking up a phone call some of it will be like a, a really lovely crafted email um it depends on where people are and what they're doing i would i would go like two or three different formats because you want to cast a wide net well, it depends on how many people you want in this, but um, and, and how mm-hmm. wide you want to cast your net. But but I would like to um, work your personal network and then work your existing community. Like who do you have on um, mailing lists or forums or et cetera? Mm-hmm. And then where would you put this that other people who might be interested in this be looking? Like are there specific mailing lists of like-minded people? that would be interested that are not necessarily, because you can also use this as a marketing thing, right? So, um, I, I, you know, if you can multi-purpose, the, the more that you can multi-purpose your communications, the better. Some people might not, not even know of you in, as an organization, but might be, if they knew more about your work, would be interested in what you do. And, and so this is an opportunity to, again, tell them and tell the mission and then to have an invitation to get involved. You know, and if they don't have the capacity to get involved, to have an avenue to collect people who might be interested, maybe volunteering for the team later on. You know, we understand that you know team leadership role might not be your 
particular cup of tea, and if you're interested in staying involved or engaged with these projects, do add your name to this mailing list, and then you're building your, your potential database of people that you can come through later for things. Okay. So relevant communities. Um, have you thought about, I mean, for Wikipedia, it's probably same, a lot of the same kind of same people for us. What are the relevant communities? So we absolutely have the open source community, but let's maybe go through. So OS community. And I'm actually thinking that a huge point could be existing open source projects that are tangent tangentially related from FreeCAD, Caden Live, open source video editing, any yeah. of these open source tools that we use, probably the communities there might be a good, good place. And how would you approach those communities, the open source communities? Um, I generally like to try to talk to like, who are the sort of informal leaders in those communities, if you know any of who they are, mm -hmm. and say, hey, we want to push this out there. We're asking for volunteers to work on X. Um, would you mind putting this out there with your network? Uh huh. So step one is find the informal leader and work through them. Yeah, or the formal leader. You know, if it's if if the organization has a uh, a communications team, put that out there. Like we, Wikimedia Foundation wouldn't do it because our community is so large. We don't push a lot of data out, but other might other people do. Or if they have a lot of them have open mailing lists, like you can get on any Wikimedia mailing list and send out an email. So that's fairly. I think, I suspect that a lot of them have mailing lists, that would be a wrong Yeah, definitely. Oh, what do you think the, yeah. the, I mean, is it strategic to just go on a mailing list or spend that time finding the leader? Or both? Um, depends on how strategic, how closely aligned. So the mailing list upside is it's a low-hanging fruit, right? It's, it's a relatively easy thing to do. Um, the leader is a bigger time investment, but if it's a community that you want to be closer to, then you'd want to make the connection to their leader anyway. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so there's open source communities. What What are the broad cr classes of communities that may be not on our radar yet? So there's definitely the hacker community, of course, hacker like DIY communities. Um, okay, now what about, yeah, so, so others. So what about like, uh, I mean, there's right livelihood. Um, Groups. I mean, there's of course agriculture. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know those particular ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, agriculture. Uh, yeah. Um, we kind of keep hashing through these. There's probably some that we're we're like not haven't have not yet identified. There's definitely the. I mean, there's back to the land. There's the survivalists. Um. But what I'd really like to tap is the, I mean, there's also the philosophically, the philosophical systems thing, like systems thinking complexity people. Oh, uh, yeah, um, they're fun and a little bit nuts. Um, I only know them, I think, through Dave Snowden's work a little bit. Um, yeah, what do they call them? The Sinofin Network, Sinofin Network people. Mm-hmm. Like peak perform peak performers, but uh, yeah, those. Uh, uh, so are you thinking of the quantified self stuff? Related to that. Um, but is there some segment that we're missing? Like in terms of okay, so we're looking for people with. When we talk about open source economy, it's about the ethical economy. Um, is it? Is there some source of people who are? I mean, this very narrow demographic of people who are ethical who are financially secure like this whole i mean we can come up with a list that maybe is very tight like very small small number of people belong to that list is it worthwhile doing that probably right i mean basically yeah, like scope it down long term anyway remember you're not building for the short term right question how do you and how do you get them to reference one another so that they're um they're uh um, you'll know that you hit saturation when you keep hearing the same people again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't we haven't really done saturation yet. But yeah, I think the the idea of a personal invite, just basically talking out kind of like the big vision language. I mean, have you seen that, like in your experience, have you seen that be, be effective at all? Or typically you run into people just randomly? Like, or is there a formal process that we can really, like, if we focus on this, can we actually get those few, you know, five or ten people around the world that are 
Like they really belong on a team, you know, or is that's not how it works? That you want them to have. And again, you need to think through how do you get them engaged in your pipeline over a period of time. So you wouldn't get these, um, uh, you wouldn't get these, uh, folks right away so again you're thinking of a longer term pipeline mm -hmm. like you'd want to get them and like have an initial conversation maybe a demo of what you do mm -hmm. uh, uh, so i would think a lot more through your engagement strategy with them like i, I wouldn't do it via an email mm -hmm. like if you can do an introduction and a meal with them if you happen to be in the right cities with them um like show them some of your successes don't make an ask right away. Understand what kind of engagement you want from them. Like, is it fiscal sponsorship? Is it um, is it uh, connections and media? Like, you just be very clear on what you're going to want because at that point you're talking about like cultivating some major relationships, and that's not this. That's a completely different thing than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we talk about an engagement strategy, what is that? Um, is there any guidelines? I mean, engagement strategy, or do you mean like also? So there's content strategy. That's like for what, how you engage people. It's a form of marketing. Engagement strategy. Any any references or good work leaders in that field, or what? What do we need to know about engagement strategy? Um, I would look at the fundraising field for that because they've got probably the best people on like cultivation of people through your network. Does that make sense? Cultivating people through your network? Yeah. So um, uh, let's see if I can find a quick example like a donor pipeline. Um, uh, you know, you. Uh, let's see. Um, trying to look online and see if there's a quick, um, uh, you know, the, the, there's one that's basic that goes like, you want to identify them, you want to communicate with them regularly, you want to cultivate a deeper relationship, then you want to ask for whatever you need from them, and then you want to steward that relationship over time. That's a really basic one. Um, right. That's kind of aimed at donors, but really sort of understanding what the stages are through your, your pipeline. Um, hmm. um, maybe, taking it, maybe taking it more from the workflow perspective, how do you engage people because uh, of how you structure the workflow? So, so this depends on our development method for how we actually go about developing open hardware or the projects that we do. Uh, I think there's a big point about generating a clear workflow which would inform how we go about plugging people in because then uh, there's a clear ask or structure for how people are engaged. So I think we really have to go back to the the workflows, which to me is the biggest thing. It's like if, if you structure a workflow properly and effectively, that's that's like the the jewel that we need to develop. Which, which we're slightly disadvantaged if we don't have all our protocols or, or development processes lined up. It, although it still doesn't address, um, it still doesn't address the fundamental thing of like, what are you communicating and how? So mm -hmm. the workflows are useful, but if you don't have the engagement methodology to go with that, like what the, the piece that, um, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, you, you just, it's just hard to go. Right forward from there yeah yeah what are you communicating how and then it's the then plug the workflows yeah and you might want to even do that for the workflow because like it's hard to plug somebody in the workflow if they still don't have the full orientation of who you are what you do oh, yeah. why you're doing it like all of that stuff still matters like you want them to be in your network by the time they plug into your workflow like if you plug them straight I mean I could be wrong on this I don't know um, specifically your audience as well yet, but, um, well, that's true. We've, we've got that. That's very true. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's a bunch of stuff in advancement mm -hmm. of a workflow that you're just going to need, um, that, that is a separate, like, in, like community engagement.
strategy that um, so like a phased entry strategy where you come in at different levels and you move up in commitment yeah. and yeah and and then so the workflow might be somebody who's already like been to two meetups for example mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah definitely that, definitely ready to plug in fairly early yeah phased entry strategies that's i think that's a big one because then it's just managers risk much better if we do have that in place uh-huh Mm -hmm. And what about just this, the, the simple thing of identifying best practitioners? Like say, so, so say this is a lot for subject matter expert advisors. Um, uh -huh. So what are your thoughts on a process for identifying those? Uh, do you have any, anything to share on that topic? Um, in my field, I go to conferences and see um, who are the thought leaders who I just really like. Um, so I, like Robert Gass, for example, would be one of them, or I specifically study developmental psychology, and so I, uh, Suzanne Cabrera would be another one. I don't know what that looks like exactly, mm -hmm. like in your field, like in, in agriculture or um, or, or manufacturing. Um, in the open source community, I'd look to different kinds of thought leaders, but I'm not sure if you need those, you know, whether they're... Um, like uh, I like Andrew Lee a lot, who uh, or Darius, who wrote a book on um, on uh, how Wikimedia runs. Like people who are writing and studying this stuff in the first place who are already interested. Mhm. Mm I think that does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I guess for us, we have to fine tune it. Okay, so maybe there's patent searches, literature. There's th institutes, there's conferences. I think we can fine tune that quite a bit for where we, you know, just a simple thing, like who's the best person in the world doing aquaponics, you know, like 10 of the top people with the most successful and the most open project, you know, how do exactly. we get up, get to identify that? Um, I think, uh, yeah, eventually we'll come up with better techniques for that. Right now we're kind of trying to s struggling to do that. And our approach was, well, let's find the, let's start with building the team, team leadership. And then we can talk more about the processes of how we find that center of excellence team for, yeah. for like for us, the approach would be just a simple advisory role would do great for us. I think that's a big uh, leverage point we need to tap. Because basically like an hour or two of somebody's time or month, you know, that's precious uh, in terms of setting the proper direction for things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I'm happy to contribute that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, maybe if we can keep refining this. So maybe, so you, you pretty much have to get going? I do. Or? I've got to take my stupid car in. Okay. So... So maybe can we set up a another call in a month where where we get into the next yeah. level no, of this? Yep. Yeah, okay. Like so the agenda for next time, um, what do you think would be useful for us to bring to the table for the next time that we can delve deeper into? Um, you know, uh, uh, anything you really want. I mean, if mm -hmm. you want to take a first stab at toolkit material, uh, I can. I'm happy to do that. Um, or we could we could focus on how far along you are we could focus on like one of these one of these steps and, and build out like what that that work product actually needs to look like or what if you're going to do how do we structure a training program is this going to be online is this going to be uh like get everybody who's in the training program together for a day or two days if so how would you chunk these pieces out mm -hmm. like you know what what for steps one through four how would you break that up so that's what I would do if you wanted to use my expertise there, or we can focus on, on something, um, on something broader. Or yeah, I think that's no. I think the toolkit or resource guide are basically training toolkit, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And did you say that you have a link that you'd still want to share, or? No, I sent you them over the the chat. The ST okay. project one is probably one of the best ones that I like. I, I like using because they're so. Um, uh, although the facilitator's guide, the 
just they have some great decision making processes in there and I'm happy to teach you those just so you know maybe we focus next time on a couple of the tools that these focus on so that you actually have a sense of what you're teaching and what I'd recommend for that. Does that make sense? I'm sort of okay. looking over How about maybe like decision making process and teams? Exactly, exactly. Let oh yeah, that would be that. a big one. See if that's what, what um, I'll teach you the one that we taught some of the Wik our Wikipedia in because okay. it works really well. Okay. Um, and see where that goes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. That's a that's a big one. A big need. Mm -hmm. Let's focus yeah. on that decision making process and teams for next time. Great. Perfect. Okay. Well, Gail, thank you so much for your time. Then. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. Yeah, thank you, but we should. Um, can you just? Are you able to look at your calendar right now to see what? What date would look good for you? You know what? In a month, the week of June eighth, it's pretty wide open. Okay, let's see. June eighth. Can we do that? Maybe Tuesday at what? What time? What time works for you? Say on Tuesday. Uh, this the like nine a.m. works good Pacific. Okay, so eleven a.m. our time. Okay, that'll be good. Yeah. June. Nine. June 9, 11 CST, 9 Pacific. Okay. And you're you're transitioning out of Wikimedia Foundation, you said? I so. am, yeah. I'm going on sabbatical, which I'm super excited about. Which which you're coming back to, to Wikimedia, or you don't know? or? I'm coming you, back where? To, to Wikimedia Foundation, or are you... No, no, no. I'm just going to take a on. summer... I'm taking a summer break and not doing any work, which is why I'm really excited about. And then I'll figure out what's next for me from there. Right, right. Okay. Are you still considering Wikimedia Foundation or not really? You know, um, I think I'm ready to move on. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things I love about being there, but I think that, um, you know, when you leave sometimes it's hard to come back and I wouldn't want to do that too soon. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this is great. So look forward to next time. And All thank right. you. Take care. Be well. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.